Good evening. I'm G. Trulia for P10 and ATTS. This is the webcast on P0171 lean condition. System to lean. Our sponsor for tonight, or sponsors, Mac Tools and Adetifex. What we're going to do tonight, you know, when you're working on stuff, just like in your shop, things happen. We're going to try to walk you through a 171. As you can see here, we have a wide range of different tools and equipment. We're going to talk about what you need to help you diagnose a 171. We're going to start out easy, and easy meaning what's the first thing you want to do when a vehicle comes in with a check engine light on, or the mill, malfunction indicator. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk over and uh, utilize our scan tool. Now, I'm going to show you something here, and I do want to tell you this, that we have a gas analyzer on our scan tool as well and we're going to switch this over to the monitor because it'll be a little easier for you to see so just bear with me while I switch this over and you can do this you know in your own shop if you'd like it's not a problem we go out here and I'm going to hit monitor the display which will then put us up top right onto this big monitor in front of us so 171, as we're waiting to do this, is a lean condition. And this lean condition is something we want to look at. Now, this vehicle we're working on doesn't necessarily have a 171 lean condition. It has other codes. This is a speed density system, meaning speed density that is a map sensor setup. So, as you see here, I'm going to be working the tool, VGA out, and you can do this if you want it, you know, in your shop, like an old big box scope. And what I'm going to do is exit out of here, go to Scan Diagnostics. I will warn you that sometimes the screen will act slower than it would on the actual scan tool. We're using System 5.0 in here. This is a new upgrade that is out. Works quite well. What I suggest is anytime you work on a car, you want to scan all the systems in the vehicle. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to hit reuse. Reuse is right here. I could pick this that this is a 2004 Jeep, but it's easy to save time. We don't have a long time here. So I'm going to go into global first, and we're going to scan all the systems. When we're looking at drivability, one of the things I want you to be aware, aware of with drivability is that you can go into domestic or generic global OBD2. It's better to do that because, for this simple fact, there are no substituted values, meaning no substituted values. If there was a problem with your map sensor or your coolant sensor had it open, meaning you were reading five volts. Well, if you were in Chrysler enhanced or Jeep enhanced, you may see a substituted value. It may plug in that the temperature is 189 degrees. Therefore, you would not know to look for a problem in an open coolant sensor, right? So in generic OBD2, we know what's gonna come up is gonna tell us what is real, okay? There is one exception like everything in life and that is if the vehicle had an air fuel wide range sensor, so either AF or WR, air fuel or wide range, not a front oxygen sensor, then that in some scan tools, not in this particular one, but in some scan tools they don't record the PID correctly and you may see approximately 685 millivolts and it won't seem to move a lot. But here, the Mac tool we're using, it does a great job. It would show you if it was a air fuel or wide range sensor. And again, this vehicle don't even have it. Now, another thing, as we're looking up here on the screen, I want you to take a look at one of the important things. If our monitors are not ready, then how are you gonna get a code in the first place? If you think you're good at fixing the vehicle, well, then when you're done, you should be able to drive the vehicle for no more than a half hour because if there's nothing wrong with the car most of the monitors should set 
Yes, EVAP is a problem, and the older the vehicle, meaning 96 to 98, are a little more problematic. But newer vehicles do it very quickly. Uh, fuel level in the vehicle, very, very important to make sure that you have between a quarter of a tank and no more than three quarters of a tank. So in other words, a full tank's no good, two lows no good. And you should RTFB. You need to read the book. If you don't read what that manufacturer has as its low level or its high level, you may be running into a problem. So we see we have our monitors already here. Okay, we notice we got a history code of a P0300. That's like a random misfire. We also have an ignition coil secondary circuit. And we also have another pending code for another misfire. Now, unfortunately, we do not have on this vehicle, no matter what we did, and we'll show you, we have a fuel system analyzer here. And I just love this tool. This thing here, unlike just the pressure gauge, a flow gauge is going to show us why we would have a 171. What do I mean by that? First of all, the quality of fuel in here. You'll see when I start this up. The fuel, if it has diesel in it, if it has a rusted tank, this one has a composite tank on it. If it has any debris, dirt or whatever, or the pump is cavitating. What do I mean by the pump cavitating? The pump cavitating is actually bubbles and bubbles are going to cause a problem. So, we're going to make sure that that is not the problem. We're going to also look for gallons per minute. Very important. I don't care if the fuel pressure, we'll look the specification up, I don't care what the fuel pressure is. To me, pressure does not tell me that I'm getting the delivery, the volume of fuel there, that would cause a P0171. So we're going to be using this tool. We tried using this tool to make this thing run lean. Well, this Chrysler system, the new generation computer that is in this, this vehicle, adjusts the fuel control so much, we're going to show you we will have this thing up to long-term fuel trim at about 30 some odd percent, both banks, and it still will not throw a P0171. So that being said, we're going to look at some stuff. Now, before we ever go into something too deep, there is important things on a vehicle. Well, what do I mean by important things on a vehicle? We can use a digital voltometer and or a scan tool and or a specific battery volt amp tester to make sure the battery is good. We did that already. The battery is good and we believe most of you out there know how to do that. But it's important to start with a good battery. The next thing is, forget about changing an oxygen sensor, a mass airflow sensor, this vehicle don't have one by the way, a map sensor, this vehicle does have one, or any other sensor on the car if there's a problem mechanically. And what do I mean by that? Mechanically, you got a valve problem, you got an engine problem. We're going to show you and give you examples of relative compression. How are we going to do relative compression? We're going to use our lab scope and we're going to use our current clamp. Very simply, we put this around the wires, we set up our lab scope, and we're going to do that. We're also going to check for a 171 using the lab scope with a low current probe, one of these. We're going to show you the fuel pump waveform to make sure that the pump is not bad. But before we get too crazy, we're going to need to look information up, aren't we? Well, why don't you come back over here and besides looking at this all system diagnostic scan that I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go through all of the systems just to show you as this is proceeding through every system on the vehicle, I'm going to switch here to Identifix. So just give it a second to refresh. Any second, you know, time on TV takes a gazillion hours here on the internet. But here it comes. It's rechecking its video. So as this comes up, come on. As this comes up any day, any second. Murphy's Law. Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. As we're doing that, we're going to look at Identifex. Okay, so I'm going to show you something and then we'll get into some of the slides so maybe you can see it better at home. I have Identifex right here up live. Okay, this is my account. I use it for years. Phenomenal, phenomenal tool. We have a lot of different vehicles we look at in here. I could plug in that this is a 2004 Jeep and all that good stuff. I'm going to make this quite easy. So I already have this selected and I'm going to select the 2004 Jeep here. And with that being said, now I can go in and type in, you know, what I want to see like a P0171. Okay, it comes up for you automatically. We're going to hit it. We're going to see what Identifix has to say and what information. Now, something new with Identifix, which is pretty cool, I'm going to show you. Besides all of these things here, look at this. This is phenomenal. It tells us 11 confirmed fixes. Trouble code 171, which is lean, and 174. That means if it was two banks. Okay. Check both O2 sensors. If one stays lean and the other one's rich, unplug the, suck, the sensor that's lean. And it kind of tells you what's going on here. You can scroll down and even see a bunch more information and more fixes okay so that's one of the things you can go into OEM direct OEM direct is going to give us their OEM information okay and the OEM information is going to be pretty neat if you look at OEM information you'll notice here it says Jeep OEM Direct. This is factory information that you will see screenshots of. There's wiring diagrams. There's how to do stuff. Okay. There's PSBs. There's specifications. So there's a lot of this stuff here. And in the sake of time, I'm going to show you the screenshots because yes, I could click on, you know, specifications, capacities. Okay. It's going to come up with the Jeep stuff here. Uh, charts and graphs engine and transmission. So here's what it looks like, and if you haven't experienced this yet, that is the factory info right there. Now you could blow it up, it's at 34% here, but all I need to do is I can make it 100%. You can see what we're talking about. We can do all different stuff. Go to temperature range charts. All different information here. But let's go back to, in the sake of time, Let's look at what we have already set up for you, so it is not a major issue. So we talked about right here, and you can follow this along. You put your name in, your username, and so on. You go through, I picked the P0171, just what I told you before. Then we can go down and look at what particular problems. We can go in and go through the diagnostics. It says, check O2 sensors. See if one goes rich or lean. Okay. Now, it gives us a whole thing, and this is important. This is out of the Chrysler information. It says, P0171 system lean. Possible causes. Base engine mechanical problem. Whoa, didn't we say that before? That's why we're going to do a relative compression test. It says check for air leaks. That's why we have the smoke machine over there. Okay? It says check for EGR type leaks and stuff. This one doesn't have an EGR. Check the PCV system. The PCV system doesn't mean it needs a PCV valve. The PCV, positive crankcase ventilation, means it's a system that makes the engine breathe to remove hydrocarbons and help burn them in the combustion chamber. Okay, it says, look for fuel control sensor out of calibration. ECT, that's the engine cooler. Intake air temperature. MAC, very important on this vehicle. Fuel delivery, clogged fuel filter, low fuel pressure, I like to add volume. Okay, a vacuum hose disconnected. Speed density car like this, you can leave a vacuum hose off for a long time what happens to the map voltage? It goes high. Map voltage goes high, gives a computer command to dump more fuel. So that's not as critical as it is on a card with a mass airflow sensor. 
And it gives us the whole thing here, how the light can be turned on, when the light is checked, like look at this, fuel system driveline instructions. Basically it says the mill will set between a range of 45 and 65. Okay, a minus 20 to a plus 20 is the short term fuel trim range before it starts throwing up into long term. So this is some great information that we're going to utilize. Okay. You can see we can pop in here and just drill down to even more information on fuel trim info. And then something like this, this is the exact document from Chrysler that you're able to print out, okay, with information on a 171. Okay. Just more, more examples of what they look like. Look at this. Step by step. Now sometimes they're going to tell you use a DRV3 in the case of this vehicle, okay, or Star Scan or Star Mobile in the newer ones. But guess what? You can use the scan tool we use in here, the Mac scan tool, to do the same thing. So don't be afraid when you look at something and it tells you, you know, use the factory tool. No big deal. We'll use this particular tool. Okay. Now, here we talked about relative compression. And relative compression, I have a, 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 a good friend of mine and helper here, Alex, besides uh, Craig behind the cat, uh, camera. And Alex is going to be doing some cranking stuff for me and going over and making sure that we can get some of these readings. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this, but look at this. In the sake of time, what I'm showing you is I can use the amp clamp with the meter but a meter is not going to tell me what my relative compression is. It's merely going to give me my peak amperage. And when I did that, and I mean my peak amperage right here, if you look at that first ramp when it comes up on that current ramping, when you look at that first peak, that is approximately the 282 or possibly more amps. Why? The meter is not as fast as a lab scope. So, what we do is we take our lab scope, we take our amp clamp, and we're going to ask Alex just to go and crank this vehicle. Okay. You put the amp clamp on, we put this around the battery cables. You can either go the negative side or the positive side. You have to disable fuel. So I already have our fuel pump relay taken out right here. Okay, took our fuel pump relay out. 30 and 87 are the two big pins. 30 and 87, two big pins are the ones I'm going to be jumping. So this is not your regular Bosch looking relay. It doesn't have the, uh, oh, it has information here on the side, 30 and 87. You won't be able to see it because good old blind me can barely see it here, okay? But it's always the big heavy pins is where current is going to flow. These three pins, are the ignition. So when you turn the key, you always hear the fuel pump go on for two seconds. That's this. Now the next thing you're going to do is just put your amp clamp on, zero the amp clamp around, and then you merely start it and crank it over. Now because of sake of time, so just do it Alex. Just crank it over. And the fuel die, but if you look at this and I put hold, okay, it should die right out. Now, this is the average, and you can hear it, we still have some fuel in Can you see that okay, Greg? Okay. So it's going to die out any second. Don't make me a liar. Die out. We really drained it out when we did this, and I want you to look back at the slot. You can kill that out. It'll, it'll be dying any second anyway. Okay. Now, again, look at the first peak. When you first do it, that's what happens. Then the peaks come down, and you're looking for even peaks each one of those humps. So each one of these little humps right here, I'll use my screwdriver, every one of these little humps is actually each cylinder. If everything is good, then there shouldn't be a problem. Meaning, look at the example. Isn't this just basically what I showed you right here to the right? All of the humps are good. You don't need special equipment. You have this lab scope, you get that amp clamp, you can do it, okay? Here's the difference if you have a weak cylinder. A weak cylinder is going to throw the amperage off and it's not going to look as well spaced out. 
That's the difference. It's playing the odd man out game. What do I mean by the odd man out game? Everything here is uniform, isn't it? If it all looked like this all the way across, it wouldn't be a problem. So if it looks like this when it's new, and it looks like this when there's a problem, it's easy to compare the problem, correct? So that's relative compression. You need to take that out of the equation right away. Why? You know, there's car companies, Ford and Toyota, that have a mandatory test of relative compression for the factory scan tool. And the reason why they have that, it's very, very important. And you don't need the factory tool I just showed you. We did it right here on our lab scope, right? And this is very, very accurate. The reason why they have it is if there is a problem, their guy starts changing a bunch of parts, you change a part, you can change every part on the vehicle. Guess what? It's not going to fix the vehicle if you have a mechanical problem. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's what you need to look at. Make sure mechanical is good first. Um, the current ramping going up and down, again, very, very easy to do. We'll talk about some stuff we're going to be looking at, testing fuel trim in a couple of seconds. But I also wanted to go over to the vehicle. If Craig can go over there, we also have, when there is a problem, we have this neat video scope that, as you can see, has a nice light on it. I'm going to turn the camera part on. And uh, I just need to adjust it to see which way it's going to go here. Turn it around a little bit. And we're going to use this if we have a mechanical problem. Oh, I have it upside down. A little more. Okay. So if you can get in on that, Craig, can you see that? Mm -hmm. So you can see I can read, you know, this test looks pretty good. I can zoom it up. It zooms up three times. One, one and a half, I think two and three. And all I do is press a button to make it bigger. There's one and a half, there's two, and there's three. So that way when you're in a cylinder like the examples I'm gonna show you in a second, we can use this if I had a mechanical problem to look down into the engine with. So a video scope, and by the way, I can save the pictures like the ones, and Craig, you can stay over there for a second while I find these pictures up here that we'll put up. And you all have this on your slides. Okay. Here's what I did before when I went in. Again, in the sake of time, I can't take a spark plug out. We got like 40 something minutes, right? So I can't do that. I took these pictures just a little while ago where we went right in there and I could see this engine has a lot of carbon buildup. It'll be a little easier for you to see. Now, that's where you need to do a decarbonization, but would that help you with a 171? Of course not. Now, how about if I had a burnt valve, or a broken valve, or a piston ring, or the cylinder wall looked messed up, or in this case, how about if I had this dirty intake, this is the throttle plate right here, you can see this going in, it's clean to a certain period, but as you go further back, you see all of this crust, it looks like I landed on the moon. And it's, I'm not Neil Armstrong, and this is not 1969, July 20th. It's not happening. This is what was in this vehicle. And I can use a video scope to actually find out what the problem is on the vehicle. So these are some things we need to look at. Now, once we have our information on what the fuel pressure should be that we found on Identifix, it should be about 58 pounds or so, okay? We'll give a plus or minus six. We looked at the current ramping. I put it on hold there, okay, just like we had before. Good. And we're gonna switch over to looking at the fuel pump for current ramping. So you gotta bear with me. And I'm gonna have our buddy Alex in a little bit actually start this up. I need to take this off and I'm gonna switch and jump the fuel pump relay. 
What numbers did I say again to go into? That's right, 30 and 87. So I'll take my clamp off. We'll take the big clamp because this cannot be used for low current stuff. You need a low current uh, clamp. I have my special leads. You know, they have a whole bunch of good lead kits here that you need that you can pop in. They have tons of different things that uh, make your life easier. So I'm going to take this with the special blades I have on it, and I'm going to go into 30 and 87. By the way, it is fused, so if something was wrong with the pump, then I would obviously be protected. It would burn the fuse, correct? Okay, so let me get these in here. Again, this is just like working in your shop. You know stuff happens, okay? We'll move our meter out of the way. And by the way, yes, could I use my meter with the amp clamp, the low current probe? I could, but I want to see if the humps of the amp clamp, of the current ramping, are a problem. So I'm going to take my amp clamp, I'm going to hook it to the scope, I'm going to have to re take hold off here. Now I got nothing on my scope, and we will hook it up, put it on and zero it. So I zero the clamp, I put it on. If it doesn't come up right, I'll have to move it around. So I'm going to ask. Wow, I already have a reading right on the bottom. I have some current ramping. Now it's a little low, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip this and try to get it up higher. Because most likely that's upside down. And it was. So when you don't see stuff, and by the way, notice I didn't go to any presets. Okay, I'll turn a little light on here for you too. I didn't have to go to presets. And what I'll do here is just slow this up a little bit. Give me one second. And we're doing this on DC. I'm going to change the millivolts so we can see it a little bit better. And we have our fuel pump current ramping. Okay. And now, you know, it takes a little while to get used to to know what's the good ramping. Now, I use fuel pump, pump current ramping along with, okay, along with, do I have good fuel pressure? Yes, I do. Now, I have a gas can here. These are two hoses that are return hoses. Notice I have no flow. I'm just reading pressure. Okay. Just reading pressure. And we're going to use this to look at fuel trim, look at oxygen sensors and all that just in a few minutes. So right now I'm not reading flow, but I'm reading pressure. I'm going to start reading flow. And right there, the top of this, can you get that, Greg? The top of this is telling me I was at nine tenths. Now when I shut it off, you know what this tells me? I have a damn good fuel pump because I don't know if you were looking at this hose. The pressure drops down, but I'm draining fuel, not a pint in 15 seconds like the old those days. Those days are gone. What I'm doing is watch again. I'm taking this and I'm going bypass. I'm gonna let this fuel out so I can see the flow. Ready? Here we go. So right there, I'm Read the top, I'm about nine tenths of a gallon, and my vehicle is still running. Okay. And by the way, you need a suitable gas can, and we have one here. So this thing proves to me, look at my gas. Is my gas clean? Are there any bubbles in there? Absolutely not. This is a very, very important tool to have, along with your scan tool, your video scope, your lab scope, all important information. Also, while we're over here, if we had any leaks, you know, one of the things we want to do is make sure, and we'll show you this in a bit, there'll be a special part, but, you know, do you have smoke coming out of the machine? Because once you have the smoke coming out, and I think you can start to see the smoke, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to check for leaks on the car. We're not going to do that here. We have a little that Deacon uh, will show you. And you'll be able to see if there's a leak 
in the vehicle. Now, if there's a mechanical problem, one of the questions I bet you're asking now is, and you can shut this off for a second. Thank you, Alex. You're probably saying, well, hold it, hold it. You know, if there was a mechanical problem, how do we know what cylinder it's on? Well, let me kind of show you how we could look at what cylinder it's on. If we take the other channel or the sink that's up here on our lab scope, and we put that on number one cylinder, if it's on number one cylinder, the firing order would be one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, six, whatever the case may be. We then could see what the cylinder problem is. What's the next step? The next step would be using a compression gauge, four bounces of the needle, the throttle is open, it's hot, you got a good battery, all that nice stuff. And if the reading was still low, you would add oil into the cylinder. It's called a wet compression test. With a wet compression test, if it went up, then you know you would have some sort of valve problem. Now, if neither one of those work, we would do something like this, and I really, my old set is not as nice. I have an old Mac set, and this is good because we can see how much air we put in one side and what is leaking out of that particular soma. That would indicate maybe we have burnt valves, maybe we have an intake burnt valve or exhaust valve, or a cracked or blown head gasket, I should say, a cracked cylinder head, a block problem, ring problem when the smoke is coming up through, the, uh, the air is coming out, I should say, with oil vapors through the oil cap. Bubbles in the radiator would mean the head gasket or a cracked head or something in the coolant. Air coming out of the tailpipe, obviously an exhaust type valve problem. And out of the intake, obviously there. So these are why you need these different type of tools. Now, we don't take the big artillery out. Again, we're looking for a problem. If there's no mechanical problem, we need to move on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch to the scan tool. And that means I need to change the screen again. I'm going to have Alex start the vehicle up. If you can do that, Alex. We have a probe in the tailpipe. We're using our scan tool with the gas analyzer on the back. Okay. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go through this. There's all our system. Look at all the stuff we had here. Trans if there's anything in the transmission. We have every, every system in the car, thank God, there's no other problems. This is called a system scan. Very important for you to do, to check every system. Not only helps you make extra money, but oh, makes the consumer aware of what's wrong with their bid. Okay, so now we don't see any other problems here that we didn't know about. We're gonna exit out, and we're gonna look at some scan data. The beauty of this tool is we're going to do scan and gas. Scan and gas is going to look at scan tool readings and gas analyzer readings. And especially when we're dealing with a P0171 lean condition. Okay. So right now you can see the engine RPM is up top. The pump will start going up. And we can look down as the gas tank should be starting. It says it's starting. Worth a second ago. Up, ah, there we go. We need to zero it. See, I knew that had to be something else. Sometimes it zeroes even though we zeroed it already. So we'll go down and we could grab anything we want. One of the things we'd like to grab is fuel trim. So we'll let the data come up. And there's long-term fuel trim. And again, we said this would be a lot quicker if it's on the tool. It's just with this monitor for high resolution, it's just a little slower. So I'm going to grab, bank one is 8.6 right now, and I'm going to do bank two as well. We're going to move these to the top. Bench is still zeroing. I'm going to go down and get the other fuel trim. And 
there it is. I'm going to move that to the top. So now we can see the fuel trims, the RPM, and I can start to see my gas readings as I plug my hose back in. And we're going to start making some problems here. When I mean start making some problems, okay, Alex is putting up the probe in the tailpipe now. So we'll start to see some of these gas readings coming up. Okay. There's the CO2, the oxygen felt, if oxygen's high is a problem. Now, we're going to start messing with this system. I'll put the scan tool down. And I'm going to start causing a problem. So I want you to come over here for a second, Craig, and just see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to cause some fuel delivery issues here. And you can hear the engine run a little funky. Okay. And that's pretty lean. Let's look at those numbers we got graphing. Notice my oxygen content went up. Look at my HC and look at my fuel trim numbers. 32 point something percent on fuel trim. By the way, we had this going for a while. I'll show you both banks. Very, very hard to set a 171 on this car. Look at that. 32.8, this is live. You can hear the probe rattling in the background. Okay. Now, look at gas readings. This computer is compensating even right now. Here's our high, uh, high, uh, high spot that was over 300 and something. I need to move this down with the scan tool. Let's look at the other gas readings. CO2 is very, very low at 10.6. That should be higher. CO is 0% oxygen. High oxygen content, that's the air we're breathing. This is what makes a 171. We're at 6 plus percent there. Lambda, 1.4. What do you know about lambda? A lambda of approximately 1, about 0.997. You've got to let that baby get back to running normal. You heard, boy, that thing was going a little crazy. Now, of course, it wants the probe removed, then we'll kind of take that. But a lambda reading that high, okay, a reading that high means it's not rich, it's lean. So anything above 0.997 or 1, high means you're lean. If it's a low number under that 9, 0.97 or 1, okay, then you're running rich. So we have confirmed that if you had those readings, you could confirm you had a P0171. A gas ion analyzer is a very, very important tool to utilize when diagnosing this vehicle. Okay. So there's our readings live yet. Okay. Let's look at a couple of other things here. I'm going to switch off the scan tool. Oh, no, what? let's stay on the scan tool for a second. Let's look at other, some scan data. Oops. We'll just take it out and just go into uh, data, data stream. Remember, we're just in generic here. Is that cable still in? Pull out. Okay, we've got to go back in. A little bit of a cable kick there. So, okay, these things happen. Okay, so we're loading up communication. And here's all of our data. Now, again, it's a lot faster. I want to remind you again on the tool. But let's look at this. Now, the engine load at idle is 19 or 21 percent. Fan came on, it went from 19 to 21. Two DTCs that we confirmed earlier, okay, the coil and the random misfire. One mile since we set it, 
We're in closed loop on both banks. Our fuel trim data will be coming up right now. Let's look at fuel trim. The Chrysler or Jeep here, same thing. You're going to see these things updating any second now. We were just at 30 something percent. Already they came down to 7 and 12. Okay. And by the way, you see the carbon that was built up in this thing? This car has 120 plus thousand miles on it and does a lot of short trips per se. And that's why there's a big carbon buildup on it. Let's look at our oxygen sensor. By the way, we can graph the oxygen sensor. We can see that the oxygen sensor was going up and down, up and down. Okay. So we can look at that. Map. What do you think about map voltage at 10 inches of vacuum? Okay. 10 inches of vacuum, you go, oh, there's a problem with the motor. No. Barrow is 29.9. Map minus barrow. So 10 minus 29. This engine would have 19 inches of vacuum if I put my gauge on it. Notice we're still graphing. We're going very low voltage, very high voltage. Let's look down here a little more. And where's the rear O2 sensor? Very important because you know those other codes that you get. Notice our rear O2 is staying pretty steady. I can graph that for you. And sometimes they'll stay low, sometimes they'll stay high, as long as they're not switching. It depends on the manufacturer. So look at them, they're pretty straight as opposed to the front. Okay. So now, let's look at some stuff because unfortunately time flies by when I'm having fun. Now, of course, there are questions that you'll be asking me at the end. Okay. Um, give this a second to pop up. We'll, we'll look through some of this stuff here and go over it. So please bear with me. Okay. So what we did, we looked inside the engine. If we have a mechanical problem, that's when we're going to use a video scope and for many other things on the vehicle. Our uh, scan tool here does a lot, even TPMS, but it also, in this case, was our gas analyzer, very helpful. A good digital voltometer, important. Now, we just showed you, we didn't actually use it here. What's the most important thing you want to use the, the uh, meter for? You guessed it, voltage drop. Because we could have a fuel pump spinning slow, giving us a P0171, because it's not getting the right voltage. Now, that means either the 12 volts going to the pump has resistance in the circuit causing less voltage or which is very common the ground is bad you probably remember a lot of those asian pickups that have all the dirt and corrosion sitting on top of the uh, fuel tanks assembly right where the float goes in and if you pull the rubber boot back you'll see corrosion and wonder why that car had a drivability lean condition so meters are very important Identifix, always knowing where the, to get the information, this is a must. There's no more knowing that, you know, the firing order is 18436572, the fuel pressure to dwell, or the, you know, 10 and 20 on an intake and exhaust valve or any of that. Forget about it. You can't remember all that stuff anymore. What you need to remember is where to find the specifications. And here we have helpful hints and the OE information. So very, very important. Again, walks us through what to look for on a 171. Goes all over what we looked at before, step by step, even from the manufacturer, besides the benefits. We talked about the relative compression. The gas readings. Gas readings, very important with fuel trim. As we've seen, the fuel trim numbers go crazy and what happens to gas? When we're trying to add fuel, remember it's a command, doesn't mean you're getting gas. We proved it. How did we prove it? With our gas analyzer. We noticed that oxygen content, the air we breathe was high. We noticed lambda. Lambda was well over one, showing us we were lean, correct? These are things you need a gas analyzer for. Our fuel pump, we looked at the fuel pump to see what the current ramping is, and by the way, Notice here how each one of these pumps are pretty even across. If one was up, just like the, uh, the relative compression, if one was up, 
more than a box different on the gradual uh, the graduals of your lab scope, I'd start to worry. So there's some good information right there. Here's an example of a bad one. Why? This would be the lines or graduals going across. And look at that. This one's high, that one's that low. This is a bad pump. That's the way to tell. Start using your scope and your amp clamp. If you save them, there's save features in the scope, you can do it. Some information here on fuel pumps, what to check, fuel system stuff. You have this information with it. If fuel trim is, uh, is past the normal range due to a clogged fuel filter or bad pump, trim should be reset. In the scantle, you see the screenshot I got out of the scantle? What happens when you replace that clogged fuel filter, that bad fuel pump, that voltage drop to the pump, all causing the 171? Don't just put the vehicle back out on the street. You need to reset fuel trim. How many of you are doing that out there? This is a very, very important step. And notice, this is in our bi-directional controls. This is not in generic or global. I go into Jeep on my scan tool. Once I go into Jeep on the scan tool, I go into engine, and then I go into actuator test or special test. And there's where I find to do this stuff. It also cuts cylinders out. Why do I want to do that? I could find if I have a mechanical problem again. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat on a lot of different vehicles, okay? Sometimes you get the ability to cut injectors out on some cars, sometimes you don't. Mode 6, that's a whole other ball game. We can have great Mode 6 data on this Max scan tool that gives us good, good information. Maybe I'll try to throw that in in a minute or two that I have left, okay? Um, if the voltage drop on each terminal, as you can see here, you could have a voltage drop problem. When you disable an injector, check to see if the hydrocarbon readings change on your emission analyzer. And yes, you need an emission analyzer. You know, a lot of places I've been from Hawaii, Alaska, down to Florida, you know, up in the New England area, all, the, all around the country, and in different parts of the world as well. Most of the time when people don't have a inspection program, they go, what do I need a gas analyzer for? You need a gas analyzer for a lot of things, okay? Diagnosing lean and rich conditions, a 171 like we did. EVAP problems, okay? Smells of gases in the car, a customer complains of something. It's a great diagnostic tool, a no start. I put the probe in the tailpipe. I'm looking for hydrocarbons. If I don't get at least 2,000 parts per million, I may not have fuel. There's no more carburetors, guys, to look down, right? You don't know if it's getting fuel unless you throw the probe in the tailpipe. Smoking it, we talked about this, look. Use a glove, use the cover, I don't care what you do, but find out what those problems are. Fuel filters, are they rattling, falling apart? Did you wet the paper with clean fuel? Did you inspect the old filter when it came out and turn the, the filter over to see if the fuel was dirty, okay? Once you get one of these testers here, a volume tester, it's gonna cut a lot of your problems out. You don't need to use it every day, but guess what? I use it a lot. I fix the hard vehicles thanks to those type of pieces of equipment. Intake gaskets, major problems with fuel trims. And by the way, this is even on a 171. If I had a 171 or any code, where do I want to go? In generic, and I want to look for something called freeze frame. Why? Freeze frame, very important. On this 171, these gaskets only mess up. You were only able to see smoke coming out of it when the engine was cold. That's right, cold. Because once it expands and gets hot, this gasket in this composite manifold, you're never gonna find that. And you can spray carburetor cleaner and all that dangerous stuff, propane and all of that all day long. You're better off looking at freeze frame, see what the temperature was. Remember, this is not your father's Oldsmobile anymore, right? Cars go into closed loop quickly thanks to the heated oxygen sensor. So what you need to do is see if the temperature was cold, smoke the engine when the car is cold only, not when the engine is hot, okay? If it happened when it's hot, then you need to do it then. So those are some good tips here. Getting back here to need more information on how to do something, you click the how-to on a Denefix. And this is pretty neat, right into the factory OEM side. 
There's the identific side, there's the G OEM or Chrysler or GM or whatever. Right? So we got a few minutes here before thank the sponsor. I want to throw something back up on the scan pool real quick. Do I have a second, Greg? Yeah. Okay. So please give me a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something where we're going to look at stuff once again on the scan pool. Plus, give me two seconds. Three seconds. How about that? Okay. Let me get my scan tool operating here again. There we go. I'm going to back out. I want to go to mode six, special test. Now I'm in generic, and I'm going to go in. Let me pop out again. Okay, there we go. Mode six. We're good. Going in mode six. And if the monitors are not ready, it may not be accurate, but let's take a peek. This is super, super important information. Now remember, we're in generic and global. If we went into Jeep specific, it's going to tell us everything exactly. Now it's querying the computer. Now you see all of these things here that say they pass? Oh, here's a fail. You see this fail? Let's pick a fail so you can see something. Purge monitor valve. The purge fail, uh, fail. Now, even though we don't have a code for purge, you know what's happening? You all know what a DTC is, a diagnostic trouble code, right? That's when the light comes off. Prior to that is a pending code. Prior to a pending code is when it fails in mode six. So we have this great ability right here to go down. Now, if I hit a pass, just so you know, you know, it comes up. This one's not decoded. What I mean by not the code, it didn't tell us what it was. But again, we're in totally generic. Okay. So there's a leak test that passed. I, I know we played with some misfires on this before. There's another leak. Catalyst O2. Hey, I can see if I got a catalyst problem, right? This is some great information. And what we're looking at, measured zero, maximum 14. My cat is real good on this thing here. The catalyst O2 sensor ratio, there we go. So at any rate, these are some of the great things you can do with your scan tool. Very, very easy to take the tool out, put it in the vehicle, find out what's what, know your information. And we want to uh, go to questions, but before we do that, we want to thank our sponsors once again. And our sponsors for this webcast are Mac Tools, and I want to thank Mac Tools for uh, sponsoring uh, myself for the P10, and of course, Denifex. A couple of things we just got to finish up here as well. I do a lot of things besides this webcast. TSP is a non for profit group, a 501c3. ESPSeminars.org. We provide training. In fact, coming up in the uh, end of the week or so, March 24th, is our TSP big event. You can check online for more information about that. And we were part of SDS, the SAE Society, of one of the years. And if you're interested in more training, this is my company where I make money, ATTS. And once again, I'd like to thank P10 Professional Tool and Equipment. Don't forget to check them out on the web at www.ptn.com. And I'm G. Trulia, ready to take the questions, so take it away for questions, guys.